Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana with what at first I thought was a bit of an odd video to make, comparing the 2023 Honda CRV to the 2023 Honda Accord. This video was a requested video by somebody who wants to buy one of these models that are just not sure which one, and they said there were no videos comparing the two on YouTube. I did a little research on that and found out that is true. So that's why we have these Still Night Pearl models with black interior to take a look at today. If you are interested in either one of these models and you want to know more about them, check out the links down in the description of the video. They will take you to the Holmes Honda website. If you talk to somebody at the dealership, tell them that you found out about them from Tom at Vehicle Visionary. Both models being fully redesigned for 2023 do have some similar characteristics to the body lines as you can see. Probably the first time you've ever seen this from this particular vantage point, but I'll try and give you the best view I can to let you see what everything looks like from the side profile as far as the comparison between the two. I know it's a little harder to see everything as far as what's going on with the CRV because it's, well, blocked by the Accord. But you can definitely see the differences in sizes. And that's one thing that's going to be a determining factor, I would think, for a person who may want to buy one of these and is torn between the two. Here's the thing. If you live in an area where it snows a lot, the CRV is definitely the best model to go with. Not only because it's going to have more ground clearance, but because the Accord is one of the few models Honda offers that does not come with the option of all wheel drive. It's only going to come with front wheel drive. With the CRV, well, you have the option of front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Both models have a very nice look with the headlights, somewhat similar to one another, as you can see. And now you can see the headlights because I turned the headlights on on the CRV. So there are some similarities, but you can also see some differences as far as the sizes go, obviously, and even the direction, kind of the upflow of each light as far as the headlight housing goes as it moves from the front end towards the rear of the vehicle or towards at least the side of the vehicle. Obviously, the Accord's going to have the smaller grille of the two, but one thing that is going to be the same on both models is both are going to have fun functional front air curtains to allow air to flow through to help improve aerodynamics, but even that in and of itself is going to be different. While the functionality is the same, the design is different, but it fits both vehicles appropriately. The Accord has a little bit more of a lower profile, a lot more of a lower profile look, a little more aggressive, a little more sporty, because that's obviously what it's meant to be. But both do carry a sporty look. We're gonna notice obviously some differences in the hood lines. Both have a more squared off front end that we have seen in previous generations. Not completely squared off, but also going to have some character lines that make them look a little bit more aggressive and a little more sporty for 2023. Now, we will notice the gloss black mirror caps on both models, but there is one big difference. For once, they had the same trim level of each model for me to review here at Holmes Honda. So these are both the hybrid sport trim levels. One thing you will find here is that the turn signal indicators are built into the side view mirrors on the CRV, and that's something you won't find on the Accord. Both do have nice side body lines, a kind of a well, similar look, not identical, but a similar look right here in this area on the door. And the same thing on the lower portion, as you can see down there. It's kind of hard to tell, I think, from this particular angle, but just trying to give you the best view that I possibly can. And as we work our way back, well, obviously things are going to be very different back here. And just to show you what is here, a lot of people are saying that the taillight design on this generation of the CRV is pretty much the same as the previous. If you park those side by side, you'll find out that really isn't true. And you definitely won't see or hear anyone saying that with the Accord because here they are obviously completely redesigned. It's a little more obvious here because you don't have that crab claw stapler look compared to what we have now. Tell me which one you like most. 
And another difference you're gonna have back here will be the exhaust finishers on the CRV that are not found on the Accord. And what is the difference going to be between tire and wheel size? On the Accord, we're gonna have 235 on the width, a 40 series sidewall, and that will be wrapped around a 19 inch wheel. And how does that compare to the tires that are going to be on the CRV? 235 once again will be the width. We're going to have a 60 series sidewall, and in this case, we're going to have 18 inch wheels instead of 19 inch wheels. And what about base price for each model? For the Accord, $27,295, $28,410 is what you're going to find with the CRV. And how about base pricing if you choose to go with the hybrid version of each model? $31,895 for the Accord, $32,950 is going to be the base price for the CRV hybrid. And depending on which trim level of each model you choose, you will have either the 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder in the Accord that's going to be making 192 horsepower. In the CRV, it's going to be making 190 horsepower. In this case, we have the hybrid powertrains. That means you're going to have the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinders mated to the electric hybrid system. So you're gonna be making 204 horsepower, 247 pounds feet of torque. And the differences between that, if you wanted to go with either an EV or a hybrid like what we have here today, definitely go with the hybrid. Would likely be a lot better choice because you don't have to worry about how much electrical capacity you have, the charge capacity you have to run the vehicle because you still have the gas motor to run everything. You don't have to worry about all of those same issues that you would normally run into with a full EV. Now, a big question to answer here is going to be the differences in MPGs. So what are they? 46 city, 41 highway, and 44 combined, 2.3 gallons of gas is what Honda says you should use per every 100 miles you drive your Accord. 43 city, 36 highway, 40 combined, and 2.5 gallons of gas is what Honda says you should use per every 100 miles you drive the CRV hybrid. Here is an area where things are going to be different, and not in the way you might expect. Obviously, the Accord is going to have a lower cargo capacity, but what's interesting is that with the Accord, whether you go with the hybrid or the non-hybrid trim levels, the cargo capacity remains the same at 16.7 cubic feet. However, if you go with the CRV, those numbers are going to range between 36.6 up to 39.3 cubic feet, up to 76.5 cubic feet. Where does that 39.3 come from, the difference between the two? Well, you can't move the floor here with the CRV hybrid. With the non-hybrid versions, you can actually change the positioning of the floor and increase the height that you have available back here as far as your cargo capacity goes, and that is where the difference is found. You will find in the rear of the CRV the 12 volt power outlet. You're going to have the lighting back here. So, obviously, you're going to have a little bit more in the way of those sorts of things back here, but you're still going to have a reasonable amount of room here. And you can lower the seats on both models, lay those flat to increase your cargo capacity to its maximum capabilities. As far as passenger space goes here in the back seat area, you're definitely going to have the least amount with the Accord. The smaller door bins, but they're gonna fit with the car appropriately. We'll hop inside and take a look at what is going to be a big difference between the two models, and that is the rear of the center console. Notice there is nothing here. No USB ports, no air conditioning vents. Now, there is one thing that is useful where that is concerned. Let's see if I can show this to you properly. There is a 12 volt power outlet in the center console. That could be used to plug in an adapter that could be run to your rear seat passengers to allow them to have USB connectivity options. You will have the conventional size sunroof. That's going to be here as well as the fold down armrest 
with the cup holders built in. And as you can see, and as you would expect, CRV being a little bit larger, well, quite a bit bigger than the Accord, you're gonna have not only the larger door bins, not by a lot, but the door openings will be bigger. And we're going to get in here and find out that we will find the air conditioning vents on the rear of the center console, as well as a couple of USB options. We will have the same conventional size sunroof right here, as well as the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. Although the design is different in this particular case, really a little bit more user friendly. And that is because of the positioning of the cup holders. Instead of being up here as they are in the Accord, when there are drinks in each drink holder, it still functions as an armrest because there's nothing in the way right here. And here within the confines of the front seat, looking in through the passenger side door, you can see that there is obviously going to be a larger door bend. Now we will not find a power seat, but the driver's seat is power here on the CRV and both are heated, something we definitely don't need here in Northwest Louisiana. And you can see a similar look because this really is based on the platform of the 23 or 11th generation of the Honda Civic. So you're gonna see a lot of differences, or excuse me, a lot of similarities. Let me knock myself in the head and get things going in the right direction again. And as you can see, you're going to have the 12 volt power outlet right there, the USB connectivity, and we won't have wireless charging, but we also won't have push button shifters. So if you don't like the push button shifters, that's a good thing. You'll have all of your options here for selecting driving modes and all that good stuff. As you can see, cup holders, the nice large lid for the center console that doubles as an armrest and quite a bit of space within that area. I'll also show you what is within the glove box as far as space goes in there. So you can see there is quite a bit of space as well. And now we'll take a look in through the passenger side door of the Accord to see what the differences are. Still gonna have a little bit larger door bin here in the front area, a nice elongated armrest right here. By the way, all of the armrest materials in these vehicles are soft touch, so they're comfortable. But one thing that's going to be different from one sport trim level to the next, as far as one model to the next, see the difference? You have a power passenger seat. You also have a power driver's seat. Again, both are heated. Wish they were ventilated, but they are not. And a look across the dashboard that does have some differences as far as how it looks. So you can see those differences here. You can see that we also have the USB connectivity here, but no 12 volt power outlet, at least not in that area. You know that there is one in the center console. So you already know that that is there. Again, the presence of a conventional shifter should be an interest to a lot of you because again, no push button shifter here. And basically the same features as far as driving modes, your drive mode selector and all that good stuff being here. And we took a look into the center console earlier, but I'll give you a little bit better look from this particular vantage point. And once again, we'll have a gloveless glove box, but it's called a glove box. So I guess that's what I'll keep calling it until we figure out something else to call it. A lot of space in there, nice and deep. So quite a bit in the area of storage capabilities. And we'll take a look in through the driver's side door. I likely don't need to tell you too much about what's going on here. As far as the features and functionality go, you do have a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel and obviously some differences for 2023 with the new digital dashboard. That's going to look nice, gonna have a little bit more of a modern look to it. One thing you won't find here is the likeness of your vehicle. You will find that on the gauge, the, or the instrument cluster, I should say, on the Accord, and you'll see that in just a little bit. But you can see what all is here. You can go through a lot of information with your steering wheel mounted controls, depending on what you want to know about with the vehicle on both. So we're not gonna do that to a great degree. And one thing you'll find on both as well is what appears to be shifter paddles, but these are actually, in this case, with the eCVT, which I didn't talk about there earlier, but both have the eCVT, or you're gonna have the conventional CVT that pairs with the 1.5 liter four-cylinder. 
that you get if you go with the other versions such as LX, EX, all that compared to the hybrid powertrains. But these are not actually paddle shifters. In the case of the 1.5 liter with the CVT, they are paddle shifters that mimic shifting through the CVT, even though it's a single speed transmission. In this case, these are for regenerative braking. It's going to help to keep the charge capacity of the electric end of things up and you can determine how that works. It works off of kinetic energy using the brakes and so you can increase that or you can decrease that. That's going to be the same on both vehicles. And then here's another place that's going to be different. The infotainment screen. Now you can pair your phone wirelessly with Bluetooth here if you want to or you will need a USB cable to actually connect and take care of either using Apple CarPlay compatibility or Android Auto compatibility. So all of that is there. We also have the multi-view rear view camera. You can see what's here. A very easy system to learn and use. And so it really doesn't matter which one it is in that respect. But if you need to go to your menu, there's how you're going to do it. You can make changes and settings and get different information depending on what you want to know about or use. Now we do have dual zone climate control here. So that's going to be a good thing. Like I said, you do have the heated seats only. I am not about to leave that on. And before we move on, let's go ahead and take a look at our driving modes as far as this CRV goes. So we're in econ mode right there. We'll go to snow mode and I'm going to show you what the graphics look like as we work our way through. And then we have normal. Now you'll notice that sport mode is there as well. So quite a bit going on, depending on what driving mode you want to use. Well, you can select that. And as far as the driver's side door on the Accord goes, for the most part, we're going to see the same features and functionality. But there is one thing here that we didn't see on the CRV. Can you spot it? It's going to be those two options for seat memory right there. So that is a difference. We will, again, as we have on both models, have the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And let you listen to the music that greets you when you hop into the vehicle. And here is the difference. We're going to have a dashboard that does actually look quite different here on the Accord. And like I said, right there in the center, you see the likeness of your car when you turn your headlights on. You'll also see that the headlights are on. That way, if they're on during the day and you don't want them to be, it'll be easy to know. But it is there. It just shows you that that is on. And a very similar setup here to what we had on the steering wheel of the other vehicle of the CRV. Still going to have those shifter paddles that again are there for changing the settings on regenerative braking. But a very big difference between the two will be found right here with the infotainment system. You will have wireless capabilities here for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so you can pair your phone. It has those compatibilities. You will also find the charge meter right here or the power meter, power flow I should say as far as letting you know what's going on with the vehicle. So quite a bit going on here, a different look overall with the infotainment screen. You're also going to find that it looks different when it comes to going into vehicle settings. It looks a lot different. It looks very nice actually, at least in my particular opinion. I think Honda has done very well here. I think the graphics are nice. I know that's not a major deal to a lot of people, but it is added value nonetheless. So that's what you have. We're not going to go through that ridiculously in great detail. And you can see there is a difference as well as far as the multi-view rear view camera goes, at least in how it looks. Not dramatically different, but it fits in with the difference in the screen. And once again, we're going to have our dual zone climate control here. It is nice to have the cold air blowing because it is getting warm out there. We're not going to leave the heated seats on once again, but there is a difference when you go into your driving modes. Now you can change your driving modes the same way and see basically the same graphics on the infotainment screen as far as what you have, or excuse me, on the digital dashboard. But you also can see that on the infotainment screen. So check that out. We're going to go in and look at this. Here is individual. And then we're going to go to sport, normal, 
and obviously Econ. That's going to be the last one that we have. Very nice look overall with the vehicles. Now let's get out on the road and see what the differences are between driving one to the other. And by the way, if you're curious about remotes, here's what you have with the Accord. You do have remote start. I know a lot of you like to have that, so you have that in the case of the Accord. And basically the same combination of remote options here as far as your buttons go and a little bit of a different layout, but this is what the remote looks like for the CRV. It too has remote start. Okay, we're gonna get out on the road for our test drive and start off with the CRV. Obviously the CRV being a little bit larger, a little bit heavier is going to not accelerate as well as the Accord, but I tell you what, there's really no lacking of acceleration capabilities here, <clears throat> excuse me, between the two vehicles. The 204 horsepower and 247 pounds feet of torque will definitely get the job done as far as getting down the road goes. And like I said earlier in the video, if you live in an area where it snows a lot and it gets really deep, now well, you might want to go with this model. Obviously, it's going to have more ground clearance than that of the Accord. So when the snow starts to, to kind of get compacted down from the vehicles driving in it and leaving a groove and, and you have that large spot in the middle of the vehicle, well, you're not gonna be as likely to do any damage if it freezes up as you would with something as low to the ground as the Accord. Now, both of these models are obviously going to have Honda Sensing. I didn't talk about that earlier in the video. So Honda Sensing, of course, going to be uh, lane keeping assist, road departure mitigation, all that stuff is gonna be there. All of those great features, traffic jam assist, adaptive cruise control. So you really are in a great shape with all of the driving aids that these vehicles come with. Easy to see out of, easy to drive. It has a great turning radius. And I don't know, it just feels a little more stable on the road in some ways to me. And not that the Accord doesn't as well, but I don't know, I just like the feeling of driving this particular model a little bit more if I was gonna have something as a daily driver. Both are very safe vehicles. Both are reliable. They're gonna definitely get great gas mileage no matter which trim level you go with. But overall, I really enjoy driving the CRVs. The ride quality is good, so you don't have to worry about having a rough riding experience driving around town. The road noise quality is also low. I know we're not testing that today the way we often would in these videos, but I have done that in several of my other videos if you want to check those out on the 23 CRV as well as the 23 Accord. When you need to get up to highway speed, whether it's the Accord or whether it's this CRV, it's not going to let you down. But let's hop over into the Accord and we'll see what the differences are between the two. So now that we're out on the road with the Accord, let's talk about some of the differences here. I do notice a little bit more road noise with the Accord than I did with the CRV. And for the average person, I don't know that that's going to make that big of a difference. That's one reason why the test drives in these review videos on YouTube are really not the best thing if you're watching to truly consider buying a vehicle or not, because it really depends on you and where you drive. I mean, the roads where you drive may be a lot smoother than what we have here for the most part. We're going to be on some smoother road here shortly than what we are right now. But depending on where we are and, and how high the speed is, you will find more road noise within the interior, a little bit more at least, than what you do with the CRV. The ride quality with the CRV does also seem to be a little better, at least in my personal opinion. But again, you need to drive yourself to see what you think about that. So what about acceleration with the Accord? Now I am in Econ mode right now, so let's see what happens in Econ mode. Not bad, not bad. You won't have any trouble getting up to speed as you need to, and most people aren't going to be flooring it every time they need to take off from a red light or something like that, at least I assume they're not. but. This car has plenty of power, plenty of get up and go when it needs it. The same thing with the CRV. 
you're definitely not going to have any issues where any of that is concerned. And again, it's easy to see out of. It has the same features and functionality as does the, <clears throat> excuse me, CRV with Honda Sensing. So you really have a lot going on where all of that is concerned. That's going to be the same between both vehicles, but obviously a couple of things I've mentioned that are going to be different. Now you can see one of the differences right here, which is going to be the infotainment screen in this case. We have the power flow meter going. I, that just makes it a little easier to know what's going with the vehicle. Plus, I wanted to give you something a little bit nicer to look at than just the window sticker there that's in the window. And yes, it is legal for me to be driving with that sticker there. It's not obstructing my view, so not a problem. But I wanted to give you that to look at on the screen just to make it a little bit more enjoyable. The technology in both vehicles is very easy to learn and use. And so if you're wondering about that, if that's maybe what has you on the fence as far as buying a new vehicle goes, well, Honda has some of the easiest technology in the industry to learn no matter what vehicle you choose to buy, whether it's a 22 or a 23, whether it has updates or has been fully redesigned or not. So one way or another, these vehicles are very solid and very great choices. But the one big difference that you're going to find between the two is going to be the fact that depending on who you are, it's a little easier to get in and out of the CRV than it is to get in and out of the Accord. So there are going to be some differences and some variations there as far as all of that goes. So. It looks like I'm going to have to wait here for a little while because now the train is coming. So I think we now have officially ended the test drive. So hopefully this video will be helpful now to make it easier to make a decision for the individual who requested the video between choosing the 2023 Honda CRV or the 2023 Honda Accord. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your thoughts are. Maybe you're trying to choose between the two as well. You're not the person who requested the video, but the video may still be helpful to you. Tell me which model you would choose and why. I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me both of these models for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to know more about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.